EVGA appears to be charging customers with dead GPUs twice what they paid for it just to get an RMA, the fastest RAM you've ever dang seen, and Intel decides that they want to consume even more power. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Captain Picard, and we're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast, whether that's first, second, third, or infinite breakfast. You, you better be here watching hot news. We go together, the cereal and the hot news. So let's start off by talking today about the top story that I could find, which is EVGA is charging people nearly double their GPU costs in order to do RMAs for them if their GPUs happen to die. This is actually a pretty big deal considering that RTX 3090s are popping like flies with Amazon's New World MMO with the GPUs just dying left and right. Well, Igor's lab actually tried to do this with their advanced RMA setup. And in order to do that, you have to pay a deposit to EVGA in order to get a GPU up front, which despite the card being purchased for 782 euros meant that he had to put in a deposit of 1728 euro instead over double in order to get an RMA on the RTX 3080. However, you will note that I said the words advanced RMA. This is not EVGA's traditional RMA process. The thing to note is that advanced RMA means that EVGA ships a card out to you first and then you send in the broken one for them to figure it out whether or not it actually is dead. And if it is, they fully refund that depositable amount. Obviously, that is a huge price, but it saves EVGA's butt in case the customer decides to get the new GPU and then never send in the old one. Not all of the GPU companies out there actually do advanced RMA, so the fact that EVGA even offers this obviously is a good thing, but it does mean that you have to pony up for what market rates are for GPUs if EVGA is gonna send one to you before you actually even verify that it's broken. Their traditional RMA system, which is you send in the card, they check it, and then they can potentially send you a new one, still remains without a deposit for you to put down so you don't have to worry about spending $2,000 on an RTX 3080. If yours dies, this is just for their advanced RMA thing. So if there's anything to take away from this, EVGA has to charge scalper pricing in order to do advanced RMA, which makes a lot of sense. Nothing against EVGA here for doing that. It makes the industry better to have this option. I would much rather have a GPU on hand while I send off my known dead one for them to fix. And if they come back and they fix it and I can get that GPU back and I have to send the other one back and I still get my money back, that's where I'd like to see things be. What do you think of EVGA's advanced RMA system? What do you think of their pricing? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, my friends. And I wanna let you know about today's episode sponsor, Four Sigmatic. My friends, this is the coffee that I enjoy all of the time. This is the first coffee I purchased when I moved back to the United States and I have been using it ever since. I've tried a few new types of coffee here and there, but I always find myself going back to Four Sigmatic because of its ground mushrooms in there. This one specifically has Lion's Mane coffee and I always feel the most clear, the most effective after having my cup of coffee with Lion's Mane from Four Sigmatic. That's the brilliant thing about Four Sigmatic is that they combine not only just the coffee, but then other plant proteins in there in order to make it the most effective drink that you could have in the morning or at night. Like every night I have my mushroom cacao mix with reishi mushrooms, which allows me to just relax, unwind, and then hop into bed feeling as snug as a bug in a rug. Now, a lot of the questions that I get whenever I promote Four Sigmatic is, but does it taste like mushrooms? No, you can't taste the mushrooms. Can you feel them? No, it's like ground coffee. It's it's essentially the same. It's almost identical. It tastes perfectly fine. I just find that personally, anecdotally, the mushrooms help me to be a bit more clearer and they're culinary mushrooms, not those mushrooms, my friends. Not the mushrooms that make it look like I'm actually Captain Picard, all right? So you should check out Four Sigmatic and their coffee heavily recommend the Lion's Mane one. I've tried the other ones. This is absolutely my favorite. You can use our link in the video description. If you use coupon code UFDTECH at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. Big thanks to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. I want you to sponsor me, AMD, to talk about the fact that APUs have launched the Ryzen 5 5600G and Ryzen 7 5700G now for sale for $316 to $260 for either version, which is good. I like the APUs. We did reviews of them over on UFD tech. You should totally go check that out. Let's check out how the crypto market's doing. Crypto stocks! <laughs> Bitcoin up 2.8% to be over $40,000, almost at 41. Ethereum up 3.45% to be at 2,800 bucks. Dogecoin, however, down slightly, down 0.27% to just be over 20 cents. Now, this is a statement I haven't said and I feel like weeks. GameStop closed up 
4.5% increase. 153.44 is what it closed on Thursday. And AMC also closing up. What? What's going on with the meme stocks? They're going back up, my friends. This is not what I expected. Up 12.3% on the day to close at 33.51. The memes going to the moon, but Firefox is not going to the moon. They're going down because they've lost 46 million users since 2018. They peaked at roughly 244 million users in at the end of 2018, but now sitting in Q2 of 2021, they're at 198 million users. Obviously, this is due to the rise of Edge and the fact that Edge is just the most superior browser that you could use. And I'm not talking about Chromium Edge, the new one. I'm talking about the previous Edge. That stole all of the market share from everybody and has nothing to do with with the fact that Google Chrome has rolled out Chromium to basically every web browser that you could possibly imagine, and Google's just trying to stifle the market on web browsers. That's not the conversation we need to be having at all. But I didn't think I'd be having this conversation today. Kid Picks is back. This is something that I didn't even remember that I remembered, which is just the Doodle app from when I used to go into the computer lab back when I was a wee little lad in friggin at, at elementary school and we had those Mac computers and it's now a web app. Listen to this. This is exactly what I remember. Oops. Oh no. Oops. Oops. Oh no. Oops. I love it so much. Obviously, there's hardly any value in this actually existing besides nostalgia, but I love it so much. Kid Picks back. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to check it out for yourself. What isn't back, however, is 3D effects. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that there was supposed to be an announcement on August 5th, and we got more details on what that is. And it's essentially, they don't have a proofreader. They're gonna be rolling out Chinese products and drop shipping them to customers with actually no plan. And they're still not filed as a trademark, even though they say that they're going to. This is absolutely great. Them saying that they're gonna launch six products at CEC 2022, which is the Council for Exceptional Children. Obviously, we hope they mean that they're gonna launch it at CES 2022. But you know, if you're launching a multi-billion, multi-million dollar company, whatever 3D effects would actually be right now, you don't have time to proofread stuff that's going on, especially when you got a Voodoo 6 PCI graphics card coming out. That's right, my friends, they announced a PCI graphics card here in 2021, not PCI Express, not AGP. PCI, are you ready for that? You're also gonna be able to get a rough on smartphone. <gasps> A Brazo Bluetooth speaker, a 5.1 home theater system, Galaxian tablet, 128 gig, and a lithium 77 K5D smart TV. These are all just gonna be drop shipped Chinese products that are not gonna be any good whatsoever. This company, don't take them seriously. We likely won't bring it up except for to talk about how they've absolutely failed them trying to use the brand's nostalgia and good feelings in order to promote this garbage crap of nonsense that they actually have. It doesn't look like it was a troll. And it looks like it's just nothing besides a company who has no actual real products that are worth selling. So they're just gonna try to sell you the fields, but thankfully they're doing it to the wrong consumer base. I think if you're trying to sell to tech enthusiasts, they tend to be a bit more discerning than just the general populace of like whoever you could just like throw nostalgia at. They'll be like, here's a billion dollars, Disney. You can take that to the bank, which speaking of nostalgia, I'm hitting in the nostalgia right now because the Back for Blood beta opened up yesterday, the early access beta in case you wanted to pay for the game early, which based on all of the alpha gameplay that I've been seeing and all of the previews that I've been seeing from like outlets and reviewers that I trust, I pre-ordered that because it, lo it looks like everything I've wanted and I played it and the beta, it's everything I wanted. It's Left 4 Dead 2 with modern gunplay and modern systems. The card system, I couldn't figure it out. I only played a couple rounds to get like fully familiarized, but like the gunplay, yes. The graphics look modern, like it's a modern Left 4 Dead. That's all I wanted. Back for Blood, I highly recommend you check it out in case you don't want to pre-order. They're gonna have an open beta next week on August 12th, so you can stay tuned for that. And you could stay tuned for your treadmill from Peloton, which if you did the software update, locked you out from actually just running on it unless you wanted to pay $40 a month in order to do so. That no longer exists with them removing that. The reason they implemented it in this first place was because their treadmill killed a child. And so they're trying to like come up with software features to make sure it doesn't kill anymore. Good job, Peloton. Thank you for bringing back a feature that should have been there all along. And I, I just would have hoped that the feature of having it a live kid would have been something I, I would have liked to have with my tech products around. But while you can go fast on a treadmill, you can't go this fast. 12,600 mega transfers per second. DDR5 coming out from A data showing off that number 
they're showing off the number that they, they can do that. Two times more capacity than DDR4. 12,600 megahertz. That's fast. That's like four times as fast as the RAM you probably have in your system right now. That's absurd. Give me all of that Kerchu, eh, data. I'll take that. But that, Intel, don't give me, I don't, I don't want, to blow up my power supply, all right? Because there's a new report coming out from a Chinese media outlet that specializes in power supplies where they've tested Alder Lake and compared it to Rocket Lake, which is the current generation Intel chip out there. And it consumes 28% more peak current. Uh, it's not, it's mm, it's a it's a spicy boy. Rocket Lake, already hot. Rocket Lake is, ooh, it's, it's a rocket. What do you expect? I don't know what an Alder is, but appears to be scalding, scaldering. Didn't like that one. Alder Lake not looking to be something very cool, but rather something very hot. And it's not cool that NVIDIA is beating AMD 11 to one, or is it? I don't know. Go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about that. With that being said, thanks for enjoying your breakfast with me, and I will see you on Monday for another season of Hot News. Season, time, place. Have some Four Sigmatic with your breakfast. You have to tech 10% off.